Here we're going to be looking at the LIFO inventory method and what we're going to do is we're going to compare the periodic LIFO inventory method with the perpetual LIFO inventory method and we're going to be going through uh, an example here with some numerical numbers here to show the difference here. So uh, what is this LIFO inventory? Well that's where we use it's classified here as last in or first out. That's where the last goods purchased or made are used first here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with this periodic LIFO here. And that's uh, where we determine the cost of the ending inventory and the cost of goods sold by taking the most recent purchases and working backwards until we account for all the units here in inventory. And for an example here, we're going to have at a specific date here, we're going to have some purchased inventory at a specific price here. And then we're going to have some sales that we have uh, for this period here of a certain number of sale quantity here times a certain price that we sold them at. Well, for our example here, we're not going to be uh, concerned with the revenue. All we're going to be uh, concerned with here is our cost of goods sold against these sales and also the remaining inventory at the end after we've made all these sales. So just looking at our example here, we have total sales here. Well, we had 200 plus 500 plus 250. Total sales here of 950 units. And then our total purchases here, if we the 300, 800 plus 500 gives us 1,600 units here in our inventory. And these, these purchases here uh, represents our inventory, whereas the sold amount here represents our sales. So let's first look at this periodic LIFO and determine our cost of goods sold and our ending inventory. So with the periodic LIFO, we just look at this total number of sales we had here that of 950 uh, units here and we would uh, charge off our inventory in this case the most recent purchases we're going to do since this is the last in first out the most recent purchases against the 950 units sold we would be charging off uh, in this order here first we'd be looking at those 500 units that we purchased here the last units purchased and then the remaining amount here would go into the most recent purchase here purchases here of 800 units so let's do our arithmetic here. Uh, just looking at it here, we sold 250 here and they would be coming out of the most recent purchases here of 500. So uh, we have 250 after the 250 are subtracted here from the 500, we still have 250 remaining here in these most recent purchases of 500 and they would be assigned against the um, uh, 500 units sold here. And then um, uh, the 500 units sold here, we got 250 against the uh, $26 amount here, and then the remaining balance would go against these 800, the next recent purchases here of 800 units, uh, 250 of the 500 here, plus uh, these 200, these uh, first 200 units sold would also be included here in these 800 units purchased since we have a remaining amount here. So let's go look at our cost of goods sold. Uh, well, for these 500 units here, we used all of those up here at $26 per unit a cost here, so that gives us $13,000. And then of the remaining amount here, well, we could let's look at it in this terms here. We have 950 total sales. We used, or we assigned here 500 of those. We're always were assigned here, so the difference here gives us 450 remaining units here. And for our cost of goods sold, we would take 450 times, it'd be coming out of these 800 units here purchased at $22 a piece. 450 at $22 gives us $9,000 here. So the total amount here for our cost of goods sold would be the sum here of $22,000 here for this 950 units. Now let's look at our ending inventory, what's sitting in there. Well, since we uh, used uh, we started out using the most recent purchases here. We ended up here, let's look at it, we have 300 in our oldest purchases here, oldest inventory, we had 300 units here. We didn't use any of those here at $20 a piece, so uh, we all of those would be included in ending inventory here for $6,000. And then for these 800 units that we have here, we use 450 of those here at $22 a piece. So the remaining amount here goes into our ending inventory, the remaining balance goes into the ending inventory at $7,700. And then for those most recent units that we purchased here in 
that of those 500 units we used all of those here at $26 a piece so we would have nothing sitting in our ending inventory here for those most recent purchases here at 500 so a total ending inventory we do our sum here we're going to get $13,700 now let's go down and look at our perpetual LIFO method here now when you're using this perpetual LIFO, that's where you attach the cost to each withdrawal here. So again, we're going to be accounting for these total uh, sales here of 950 units. So taking first our 250 units here, those would be going against our most recent purchases here of 500 uh, units. So 250 of those here at $26 a piece. Uh, 250 at $26 a piece gives us $6,500. Now that's for our cost of goods sold that we're calculating here. Now for our 500 units that we sold here, they would be going against the most recent purchases here of 800 units. So uh, at $22 a piece. So we got 500 of them here at $22 a piece. That equal to $11,500. And now for our units sold here of $200. Well, they would be going against the most recent purchases here of 300 units. So uh, our cost of goods sold on that would be at $20 a piece. So our cost of goods sold here would be 200 units at $20 a piece for $4,000. Now, just summing our amounts here, our total cost of goods sold for those 950 units would be $21,500. Now let's look at this perpetual LIFO, our ending inventory was sitting in there. So for those uh, oldest units here of 300 uh, sitting in the inventory, we use 200 of those here. So the remaining balance here would be sitting in ending inventory at $20 a piece for $2,000. And then for the uh, 800 units here, well, we use 500 of those here. So the remaining uh, balance here at would be sitting in ending inventory at $22 a piece for $6,600. And then for those most recent purchases here of 500 units, we use 250 of those here. So the remaining amount here at $26 per unit would be sitting in inventory equal to $6,500. So our totals for our ending inventory of some of these amounts here, we're going to get $15,000. $100. Now, this uh, here summarizes how we would be doing our handling our perpetual LIFO versus a periodic LIFO method.